database. By the way, good rule of thumb, if you can click the down arrow and something appears, stuff is working. There. So this step is all going good, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I could have clicked Test Connection, and look, there we go. There's the data source, which is the server, local host, which means it's the local server right over here where I'm running all this stuff on. Initial catalog is another fancy word for database, right? And then for the, and, and then for the permissions, we put Windows authentication, so that's embedded in there. Now, the next thing you need is our credentials, right? How does this actually access? All right, if, if, Sir, if SharePoint has Kerberos in, enabled, it works just fine. However, though, I haven't had time to go through and right now and actually enable Kerberos on my, on my SharePoint server, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter in a straight username and password. Back in the 07 days, I remember many of us having to do this because Kerberos just wouldn't work at some places if they were advanced enough. Most places it worked, though. So anyway, brandondemos.com, and this is a dummy user that I created, VI man, there we go. And there's a dummy password I put in there just for this particular purpose. And I'll tell them to use it as Windows credentials. There we go. And I'll hit OK. All right. Now, once I've actually got that done over here, I'm going to click Next. So I've got my data source all configured now, right? I gave it credentials to actually use. I gave it a username and password. The credentials allowed it to basically um, communicate with SharePoint. You probably wouldn't have to do that in a real enterprise environment. I know that if I were running a SharePoint server, I would have configured Kerberos and taken out the time. So I'll click Next. Now, once you've got that done, look at this. This is pretty cool. Design a query. Okay, so first you did the data source where you put in username, password, you name it. Now what you got to do is you got to tell it which columns and which tables to actually build in. Now you can drag or drop these columns on there if you want to, and that's, and that's just fine. Or what you can do over there is you can actually run your own SQL query. So in this particular lab, they've actually got their own SQL query. So I'm going to click Edit as Text. And now, bam. This is where some text goes. Now, what they did over here was giving us some text. They came through. Let me just bring this up. And they gave us some text over here that basically generates a query all by itself. So I'm just going to bring this over here. And it, or, or I'm sorry, it's going to generate a data set completely by itself. And I'll just bring this up. Very nice way to do it, by the way. There we go. Access that. Now I'm going to come down over here. I love copy and paste. There we go. Sorry about that. And I'm going to paste this. There. And I'll even test it. This little, this little um, run thing over here, this little exclamation mark, means run it. And by the way, it's a good rule of thumb to try to run it in here because if it doesn't run in here, it's definitely not going to run when you try to run it for users. So good rule of thumb to be able to do that. And then once you're all finished, I'll just click Next. And now, finally, on this final part, I have to tell it this. How do I want to go ahead and actually bring values in here inside of the report, right? So how do I actually bring values? Well, here's how I do it. Um, following their ex explanations, first I'm going to have something called the values. Now these things are going to typically be numbers that get summed or something that allows you to do some form of summarization. That's the big thing I want you to see. And when I say summarization, that doesn't just mean add. That can mean taking an average, a maximum value, anything like that, okay? So first, you come over here to values, where you typically look at your hard-coded numbers first or whatever else, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to start over here with product. So I'm going to take product, and I'm going to drag it over to values. Now, once I drag product over to values, what I'm going to do next is drag quantity. Now, once I drag quantity over to values, notice how it gives me a sum of quantity. So what it's saying over here is, I'm going to take products and I'm going to summarize them some sort of way. Tip from Brandon coming over here that's not in the, that's not in the book. Whenever you want to summarize something or average something directly, right, um, and you want it to be averaged towards the lowest, lowest level, by lowest level what I mean over here is if we say like we have product Z and product Z had, you know, we bought a quantity of five, and then we have product E and then product V and product whatever. And what we're doing over there is we're not summarizing by it, I'm sorry. Um, or, or what we're doing over there is we're not grouping by it, but we're actually allowing it to appear row by row by row by row. We drag it into values. I'll show you what that means in just a little bit, but keep that in mind. Now, next up, what we're going to do over here, just following this particular, just following this particular example, we're going to come over to row groups, okay? And on row groups, what we're going to do over here is we're going to start by dragging the sales date over to the row, row groups. Now, once we drag the sales date, we're going to come down and drag subcategory right underneath it. So what we're saying is we're going to allow people to drill down from sales date down to subcategory. 
And then once they drag, drill down the subcategory, they can see all the products related on the same level of the quantity. So they're going to be able to summarize by date, summarize by category, but they're going to have products matching each and every single, each and every single line. And you guys will see that in just a moment. Now, for this particular example, we're not going to do any column groups. We'll do that later on. So keep that in mind that column groups are going to be out. But this is our, this is our, um, this is our data set right now, right over here. And you guys can all see that. So this is our data set just at the moment. And let me add one more thing over here. Let me add sales into values real quick, so that I so that, so that I get two different summarizations. There we go. All right. And now I've got sales, sum, and product, and I've got subcategory and sales date. So that's our very first step right over there to generate a data set. So I hope everyone sees over here that when I say data set, we're looking at the columns that were generated from either some sort of query or from dragging and dropping tables, essentially. So we're looking at the tables and columns that we're using, and these columns are known as fields, and typically we group these fields into meaningful patterns, okay? Last thing over here, do you want to show the subtotals? Yes, I do want to show the subtotals, so I say yes. Um, and the grand totals? Yes, I do. And then I tell it blocked, subtotal below, which means I'm going to be able to click the little plus, and I'm going to be able to see the subtotal on the bottom, essentially, because I've got my expand collapse. And then you guys can see there's my subcategory, there's my product. We'll see that in a moment. Now I choose this template, right? And you have to make it pretty. So what do you want to choose? Corporate, forest, generic, oceans, probably a is going to be the most common one. So I'm going to choose ocean over here, right? And that's this light blue sort of feel. Now you can change this quite easily, guys. You really can. But for now, though, let's stick with the tutorial. So there's ocean right over there to give us this light blue. Finish that. And then to test it out at the very beginning, so we finished up up to add totals and subtotals, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a, I'm, I'm going to do a run, which causes it to essentially do what's known as previewing the report. And look at that. Here I expand it, and you guys can see those are blocks. You can see how they come out into blocks over there. There's subcategory. Then I expand it again, and you guys see I can see product. Now, because product was, was in the values with quantity and sales, notice that you have one product appear for every one quantity for every sale right over here. Whereas, whereas when I expand it, notice how then product groups or quantity groups over here, just like sales groups. And then notice over here as I expand it, bam, it groups again, and the figure changes. So that shows you right over there how you actually do it. Um, you have what's called a level of granularity. You drag, right? You drag the thing that they're actually measuring, the thing at the lowest level, like for example, individual products. Those go in the values with the actual, with the actual quantities over there. Um, these, on the other hand, though, these categories go into the row groups or the column groups, depending upon how we want to use it. Okay, that's part one of the demo. I'm going to put it in YouTube. Then I'm going to come right back over, and we're going to do part two next. So... Hope you guys like it and look forward to the next part.